card. They should probably go for Ice's hero. I think saving Black's hero is decent because they have multiple options. They have the Life Stealer and the Jug. I think those are the two best just to get in Drow Ranger's face. You have you already have a kind of a vehicle with the Earth Spirit in that manner to get on top of the Drow Ranger. Now, normally when you go up against a Drow Ranger, you go for the aggressive Trilon, or at least you try to have at least an off lane mm -hmm. that can pressure her or at least contest her in, in last hits. Do you feel like they're going to go for an aggressive duo slash Trilane? Anything that would fit Ice Ice Ice's hero? Is, is Magnus the right hero to do that with? I think it's more going to be like a Magnus Jug type strat again, yep. similar to what they did game mm -hmm. three. This is not a hero that you normally do like kind of dual lanes in the off lane so much. Maybe Earth Spirit comes up if the supports get too aggressive, but Magnus just wants to like Iron Talon jungle a bit, yeah, get his XP, power. get his farm. It's a very passive off laner who's not looking to contest the lane. Does get in the face of Drow later too. It's a heavy team fight already coming out from Faceless versus the you know the, the Drow strat that we've already talked about from yep. DC. DC just gonna steal that jug, run it mid, <laughs> take it away. They could, they definitely could have all the chance to if they want to deny that, or they could pick something up that they know is gonna be good against it. Which heroes would be able to deal with the juggernaut? A Weaver. Weaver. Support Weaver. Could quite definitely likely. be. The, yeah, it could definitely be the support Weaver. It's versus Rubik or Spirit. They have a lot of. They have a decent amount of disable form already. Rubik now has a good, a very good spell to steal with that. Yep. But yeah, go focusing more on like the minus armor. It's like heavy physical damage oriented lineup coming out from DC versus Faceless. Yeah, curious to see what they look to build around the Magnus. Mention the Jug, but there are other kind of melee carries you can pair for the Empower. Mm -hmm. PA comes to mind. Ooh. A great gap closer to the Drow Ranger. That used to, that was a, the big thing that we saw at Boston. Every yeah. time somebody picked Drow Ranger, it was like instantly PA and bam, mm. right in your yeah. face. So, definitely a possibility. We did say it ran in the mid lane. Yeah. Very good call. Nice. Shooter. Nice. You know, the synergy with the Magnus is there. And they got the silence already from the Earth Spirit as well. So, they have, I feel like they have got quite enough tools to deal with the Weaver, even if it is a core. If it turns out to be one. They also have flexibility with the PA for the lanes. Like, they yeah. can wait to see what DC pick up with both their fourth and fifth pick before they decide, okay, do we want the PA mid or in the safe lane? Yeah, absolutely. So they don't have to worry about the PA, like, losing in the laning stage. Is it exclu exclusive that Ice only plays the mag? I think I saw Jabs play the mag at Boston. It's been a while, but I think recently it's more so just been Ice. There's still, there, there are flexibility options for, for both teams. Mm -hmm. Um, but more so for faces. I mean, you mentioned that maybe they're going to try to go for a little bit of a cheese strat. Maybe, you know, it doesn't really look like any kind of a cheese type of draft right now, but they can definitely throw a curveball. And they're kind of showing they just saw what Secret did with the PA, and they're like, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's try some of that. That looked, that looked decent. That looked yeah, decent. That looked pretty good. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Digital Chaos, they kind of know what to deal with. They have got maybe a little bit lack of lockdown right now. I think they want like a magic damage type hero in the mid lane. They don't want more right click. They're going to be too all in at that point. PA has the evasion. Getting some kind of like Queen of Pain type hero for mid could be I, an option. I would like, we haven't seen Queen of Pain either. I really would like it. It's a hero that's very strong this patch and seems to be getting ignored a lot in this tournament, except for on the last ban. I, yeah. I think we've seen it like two or three times being yeah. banned out with. Uh, I thought Queen of Pain, I don't know. I mean, if they want to go all into the push, there's the obvious like Dragon Knight type the Dragon hero, Knight, but yeah. which can control the PA a bit. But uh, doesn't gonna say well. there we go. Uh, there I don't need to do anything. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Shoot. <laughs> I mean, if we can read the draft as as we just did, then surely uh, the players will know what's coming as well. No, so Shiva, we know more than that. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> don't say that. Okay. No, it's, it's, they know nothing. I really liked as soon as you mentioned the Quap, I was like, yeah, PA is a hero that takes time. It's squishy throughout all stages. Yeah. Queen of Pain has the massive burst potential. Wins the lane as well with the Drow Aura. Definitely fits exactly what they need to have that mixed damage potential in their lineup. Just need that. Offlane initiator for DC, most likely. And if you are going to run a Queen of Pain mid, you do not want to play Phantom Assassin against that. So, no, what not. mid hero for, for Jabs comes to mind against Queen of Pain? Could Queen of Pain Rubik is a very mid? strong. Do you, do you switch Rubik, the Rubik to a mid? Yeah, against Quark, Jabs play Rubik mid, plays Rubik mid as well. They ban, ban out the puck? I guess banning out the off Thinking offlane puck. Off puck. Uh, with the Drow, that's something OG used to a bit, and some teams like to, to pair with Drow. Massive amount of burst damage potential with that yeah. puck as well, so I think that's, that's a good ban. Just disrupts the whole entire team fight that they have. Mm. It's a big, I think it's a little greedy right now coming up with Faceless, so they need something that can tie in and fight very yeah. early, because like all these heroes kind of require their levels. PA requires farm, Mag wants a six, Mag wants Blink Dagger ideally. Yep. 
That's why I feel like a Rubik mid is a bit mm. less greedy. That's why you yeah. send him there. He doesn't have to dominate on farm. He's more of the tempo controlling type hero. Well, let's uh, see what Digital Chaos thinks uh, that Rubik is going to do because they ban out Slark, so they ban out a core. And, and they, they go for the bat. So the moon, the moon bat. Yeah, and Slark would have been a hero that isn't too afraid of versing a bat in lane. Although, I'm not sure it would have been the the best to fit in Faceless's draft. All right, Flock, like me and Cheever have done one. Last pick's yours. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> It's too open-ended. You don't want PA mid, so jabs mid hero. Yeah, you don't even know what role it is. It's <laughs> either Rubik or, or Could be support. carry, oh could God. be mid, could be support, yeah. could be three different roles. Could be an off lane if they want to do mag mid, you know? Yeah, it's still, they could still leave it very open. They could pick anything except a full position. I, just, I hope it's not Tinker. <laughs> okay, to be fair, <laughs> we have only not. seen Nuts play the Witch Doctor and the Winter Wyvern so far. Yes. So if they do run jabs on the Rubik, then one of those heroes, would those, would those fit? Wyvern's decent versus Draw Ranger strats. Decent. Yes. Decent. Mm. Not great against, like the Weaver can be really annoying to Oh, those. hello. And a little bit <laughs> okay, of Okay, I don't think any of us were going to call that. I nope. would not ever say that hero these. I still don't <laughs> oh. think that hero is actually very good. I think he just takes too long to come online yeah. and they already have a lot of ways to clear the illusions mm. as well as I guess you can kind of get in Drow Ranger's face, kind of in a way, but. Phantom Rush in, you got Manta to get out of the silence, but I, that's a really odd last pick. Yeah, we, we mentioned that Faces was not the strongest in the laning stage, and it looks like they might struggle on this one as well. I think their lineup is way too greedy to deal with DC. I did say Faces before the draft, but afterwards, I'm okay. all, all for DC. Jump Jim, how about you guys? I want to see how the PO works. I'm, I'm like kind of reserving <laughs> judgment because I'm, I want to believe they're onto something with this last pick PL, but. I mean, I think, I still stand by, I think, DC being slightly favored. But. DC slightly favored? Any timings that we got to look out for in this game? Like, the laning stage is everything in this game, or not? I just think it's going right. to be too hard for them to... Okay. They're going to come out of such a deficit of the laning stage. So what needs to happen difficult. for them to win this? Earth Spirit needs Earth, to yeah, do... Earth Spirit? Earth Spirit? <laughs> no pressure. No. I think he's the, the, the big player that needs to come up. And then on the, the DC side, it's what Misery can do on the support weaver as far as his impact on the game. Okay, well, we are going to find out if that Earth Spirit can have as much impact as he needs to have. It is over to our commentators for the, for the only game. It's the best of one for the elimination game. Word. We're going to start with the word odd, Merlini. Um, feels good, dude. PL is, I'm not going to go against that, even with the illusion change up. It seems odd anyway, but it's faceless. It's meant to be odd. It's their thing. I think you're just trying to take away from the fact that you thought it was going to be a mid Rubik the whole time. That is potentially possibly right. Um, <laughs> it was sitting there, and they were also tossing it up as well if it was going to be that mid Rubik. But it's not. It's going to be PL into that mid lane going for them. But DC's draft looks very, very stable across the board, too. I like PL mid versus the Queen of Pain. You can uh, doppelganger off the Shadow Strike. He also has a lot of agility, so he gets extra benefit from the Empower. Also, Digital Chaos have pretty terrible AoE. Mostly just the Queen of Pain, unless you want to go for the Ags, Maelstrom, a Drow in the late game. Mm -hmm. uh, but That's still going to take a decent amount of time, and by that point, yep. you're probably expecting everyone to be in power buff up and have a lot of initiation from Faceless. Yeah, you have to deal with RP. That's the one big problem I see going late game uh, into the this in, into the draw lineup. Yeah. It's also one of those fun little things too when they when they run their Rubik. Uh, obviously they bypass going for the damage and go for the gold per minute. And Nuts will walk around with Aghanim Scepter's Blink Daggers four stops. He's gonna be a real big controller. And that's kind of what I like about both the supports coming out from Faceless. Uh, combining the Earth Spirit who's already been like the king of control throughout this tournament and then add the Rubik on top of it. It's just a lot a lot to work together. But I'm with the panel as well. Like it's it's gonna be a rough laning phase for Faceless. Is it? I don't think so. I don't think it's that bad. Queen, think... Queen dominates most matchups, but Fa Phantom Lancer, I think, is one of the few melee heroes that actually does pretty decently because of the doppelganger. Um, and, of course, you do have the Earth Spirit threat on their side. Uh, bottom lane, Batrider versus PA. Uh, it's going to be a, a wash, I would say. Probably slightly Batrider favored in that. I don't really think they can kill uh, the Batrider at all in that matchup. Magnus versus uh, this tri-lane. Yeah, Mag. Probably just needs to skewer away, play it pretty safely. I definitely think DC has an edge, but I don't. I don't necessarily think it's that one-sided. I want to see uh, Ice Ice Ice's positioning. Like this observer ward that he managed to get down is, in fact, really really useful because it's, it's going to make it so at least his lane should be pushing out all the time towards him, so he won't get in that position where potentially sun gusted and then just killed off by the cold arrows and damage that the draw ranger provides. 
I wonder if you can actually do some creep pulling shenanigans with the Magnus. Like if there's a ranged creep in large camp, if you can like skewer skewer yourself away, kind of like a uh, do like with the IR. Yeah, yeah. I, it's possible. I don't. That that timing's gonna be a lot more difficult. Like IR seems a lot more fluid. Like when you do the skewer, you got that little wind up beforehand. So you gotta wait for him to attack. It's possible. Or you just take the creep with you. You can't skewer creeps. That's that's a shame. Nerf, please. <laughs> Pudge Pudge is, Pudge is already too imbalanced. Like, what? You want to make it so he can't hook creeps? Yeah, or it's, what? it's the indirect nerf. So, uh, so Magnus can actually skewer creeps now. That would be a dream. <laughs> that would be a nightmare in team fights. All right, ice, ice, ice. Oh, skewer. He's gonna drag in misery underneath the tower. There's no Shikuchi on misery. It's like a lot of damage. Underneath the observe board, he knew he was going to be okay, but one more hit would have done it. He doesn't have skewer for a while. Misery, quick Shikuchi, and then just runs away. Does the damage, and that's going to be all. But what if they had a sentry ward there? <laughs> misery would have been so <laughs> sad. Not that they would. No, it was close. It was just a little bit further to the north. So we just shadow strike. Jeb just doppelganger. I wonder if he's actually going to max the shadow strike. I don't really think it's a great idea versus the PL, but it is very good versus most of their other heroes. Generally, one level is enough if you want to, like, stop a Magnus's blink or damage a PA, however. Mm -hmm. Looks like Moonery had to burn through a large amount of his consumables early on in the bot lane. Urspur is waiting for his initiation, just twitching with his stick on the bot lane. Black has the ability to jump in quickly, too. And there's no Firefly until now. Like, Moon has hit his level 2, so if he needs to level it up, he can do so. But now, rolling boulder, short range. Nuts coming in close, too. If you can just reach him in time, but with no boots, he won't get in range to get that quick little telekinesis grab and throw back. But they force the abilities out from Moon, at least. Black also doesn't have a, a stout shield. He was taking creeps quite a bit, but he has plenty of regen to deal with it. And they managed to deward that uh, pretty cleverly placed Observer Ward, it seems. So, looks like ISSS will not be able to get that much out of the top lane, especially with that Observer Ward eyeing his possible Iron Talon slash jungling movements. Oh. That's a fun little rune to have. What have we Can at least screw around with the camp if he wanna, wants to wait to the three minute mark. Misery is going to say hi. But a quick little haste room maneuver. Also, want to keep my eyes on that Earth Spirit. He's a big rotating hero that's done so much this weekend already, and uh, he's hovering around the mid. But Weeha's already back pretty defensively on his tower. And Wee's like at full HP. I don't think there's any way they kill the Phantom Lane or kill the Queen of Pain in this situation, especially with the bottle coming out right now. Maybe if he aggressively blinks, but that's also pretty unlikely given the matchup. This Observer was done so much for DC. It's now seeing XY rotate to the top lane, so they understand that the Earth Spirit is up here. Potentially that'll work with the Magnus. If they can get us on the Skewer, they're probably assuming they can find that kill on the top lane. Many teams have tried to prey on Ice Ice Ice's over aggressiveness or slide positioning, which it looks like you can find a kill. But this, is, this trap's not going to work, so it's just straight back to farming for the Magnus, and they let the Earth Spirit soak up the experience in the lane. But as mentioned, DC are crushing in the lanes. Queen of Pain, 16 CS2, the only six of the PL. Probably exacerbated by the fact that there is a Drow Ranger on the safe lane who has 22, pretty, pretty comparable in terms of the uh, safe laners. Shabs actually missed his Phantom Rush. He charged up the hill, but I don't know if he just lost the attack on Weeha. But his rush never connected with Wee. And that Observer Ward again sees the rotation. Knowing Earth Spirit's coming back down to the mid lane, Misery has also moved over as well. And this is giving a lot of space to resolution. This is going to be a very quick level 6 because the support's not even having to stand on the lane. It's so giving he's, a lot he's, of getting, he's getting all of the experience. Batrider is also just getting free levels on the bottom lane. I don't really think they can kill him just because they have to chase under Firefly as a melee hero. That's not really the ideal situation for killing a Batrider. Uh, Ice 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 just got scouted out coming up a little bit too far with the Colin Arrow slow him up, but he there's gets a, a skewer quickly away. There's a TP on the bottom lane. They're making a move on Moon. And they can bring him back. Down. With the kick, fairy fire as well as one chance. That's a lot of life and still fighting inside the fair in, inside the firefly. A lot low life for XY. He's almost burning out. He needs one last little kick, but the, the arrow, the stifling dagger out from Black. Revenge will be here from Misery. A quick TP in, so he'll get revenge in the form of both the supports of faces of safe lane. Nice TP by Misery to really clean things up. Earth Spirit was caught in between a tree and a lane of fire. 
So, couldn't really move unless you wanted to die. A lot of napalm sacks. Moon created a lot of space there. Animal TP him in, fill up Wii's bottle. And back to bottom lane he goes. Well, the He's same doing thing really well. Levels. Oh, we are. That was no pickup. Thought Jasmine have had a little bit longer to hit into him. They went for the Fade Bolt before the Telekinesis grab. So Weeha just blinks back up to the high ground in a way. The Dire actually have, yeah, they have that one Observer Ward sitting on their side of the river. So it sees nuts, but it didn't see the Earth Spirit. Roll him in, pick him up, and this time around, they find the kill on Weeha. They were just fluffing him up. F fluffing him up? <laughs> you make him sound like a pillow. <laughs> you look tired. Have a nap while dead. Poor Queen. It was a hard life, especially when like, she was having such a good time in lane. Now it's 18-6 to the 22-11. The Draw Ranger is still shredding the CS wall. They're Four. getting a lot of farm on the Jungle Magnus, though. He has uh, two points in, in power, which is really, really strong with the Iron Talon. So, yeah, Draw Ranger is getting farm, but keep in mind that I think uh, Faces' net worth is a little bit better spread out. How's or it looking overall? Okay, so it's only like 400, 300 in favor of DC. So, very, very, very negligible for the early start. Nuts. Going to say hello to Misery. Gets hit by the beetle, and, uh, well, these creeps trying to help him out, but Nuts knows he needs to get a telekinesis grab. He's going to survive this. Can't see Misery. We'll see Moon, but Misery's already find, found that kill, and Moon's moving closer towards Black. Just has to kite it around the tower. So, he won't find the kill on the PA, and Black very defensively TPing out. Potentially could have fought Moon there. No level 6 uh, fa uh, lasso. Up for the bat rider yet. He does have a helmet dominator grabbing that mud golem creep up nice and early. Well, this is a nice little trap. The observer ward's gone from the secret shop area, so this will allow faces to move undercover. So nuts. They start with the first hit, the roll that's very far off target from XY. And Saksa maybe thinking he can have a crack, but no. Resolution has his level six, but Probably needs that extra point up in cold arrows before he's really going to have an opportunity to get that nice little kite damage kill. Yeah, or his lance. He's very close to his lance. Jabs in the mid lane, taking a little bit of harass from Misery and Wee, but he has a lot of armor. And like Misery's better. taking a lot of damage too, so you go into that double gang and Misery wants to jump up. The lances fly. Sonic Wave from Weeha will miss. Rolling Boulder forward as we have ourselves a quick pause. That sentry ward from Jabs, that's what allowed him to go for the initial lance, but Misery moved just far enough north to get out of range of it. That's when you say mouse issues. <laughs> yes. Having having hang. Hang. It wouldn't have killed him, regardless. Yeah, he would have survived. Yeah, 290 damage, I think he had like 410 at the time. But it did force him to be scared, pop his stick, divert the support's attentions, attention. But you're fine with that if you're jams. You've, you've still got your shrine to activate. So if you want to move down to that, with the, uh, with the Earth Spirit also engaging, so jams can throw himself another lance out if they can keep Vision of the Weaver. It's two or oh, three seconds until that, until that Shikuchi's going to come back off cooldown. So if Earth Spirit can get a combo... It, he's really far away from Misery. I don't think he can get a lance on him. Maybe if they had a sentry ward in the area, but that is not the case. Well, so we'll probably get to come back after the pause in a second and just watch Misery escape, potentially. Rune's getting up in Black's face still. But Black, I don't think he's going to be too sad about this now. Like, Black's still sitting at 3k net worth. Yeah, he's about 800, 900 behind that of the draw. But he's also getting high enough levels that he'll feel confident enough to initiate onto the Batrider. And with so many one charges, plus having the Dominator up his sleeve, this is, in fact, kind of Black's bread and butter for a safe lane. He likes having these one-on-one -on -one matchups at this point, because he, he wants the solo kill. Mm -hmm. That's what he, and that's going to just propel him forward a long, long way. I'm surprised he doesn't have a Blightstone. I think any of the orbs actually synergize very well on the, mm. on the PA. Orb of Venom if you're a support, and Blightstone if you're a core. He's already level 7. That crit just does tremendous amounts of damage. Well, although Batrider does already have his Trinkle Boots. Yes. So he's got, he's got some decent armor, like, sitting at 6. But as, as you said, like, if, if he does have the Blightstone, he can still get through. It just makes that, like, crit sting that much more. And you're in that mm -hmm. HP threshold where you could just die. It's actually going to be an interesting thing going into the later game, too. Like, the range of Stifling Dagger 
Like, I think it got nerfed a couple of patches ago. But it's Only the lower levels. Only the lower levels. So even even when we go to later game, then, if you have that vision over on Moon, you can disable Blink Daggers at, like, the worst time. And as far as DC's initiation goes, Moon's kind of it. Like, you've got the swap, but if you do that, you sacrifice your Vengeful Spirit straight away. Mm -hmm. So how do you get the initiation and still hold the advantage? Because you're looking at a lot of potentially very squishy heroes that can get caught out. Yeah, you've got time ups to escape, you've got Gust and potentially Dragon Lance to to push the Drote Ranger away. But I'm I'm concerned if, if a fight goes wrong for DC, it can go horribly wrong for DC. And that's saying that up against a team who has a Magnus, which can make things go horribly wrong. Later on they have fail safes. They'll have the uh, time lapse on the Weaver with Ags, especially because he's already on a killing spree, three zero zero on misery, and then they also That's have the defensive swap onto the eventual spirit. So if they all in on a hero like the Drow Ranger or the Queen of Pain, it could easily be turned around with those defensive abilities. So RP is not the end all be all yeah. in team fights. That's a good point. Kind of you kinda of forget about the agonims over on the Weaver. Oh, I never forget. I harp that thing <laughs> up. Dude, that thing is <laughs> you, amazing. You, you shut it down early, earlier on day one, you shut it down. Or was that fog to shut it down? No, I, d I think they had something <laughs> else, though, to deal with. They had, like, an SD or something else to kind of save a hero. But if you don't have any defensive uh, saves, it, that thing is amazing. I mean, that thing is just amazing in general. Mm -hmm. Time lapse. And then Rubik gets Aghanim Scepter and steals it. That might be a while. <laughs> Definitely could be. Especially the ability to actually steal time lapse, because we was just pumping Shikuchi out all the time. Dude, Rubik doesn't even have boots. Uh, life is hard for him. But 60 again, GPM will solve all his problems. <laughs> it really does. It really does. Unless he wants to do it the old-fashioned way with old-fashioned farming, and then he goes for the 50 plus, 50 plus damage. Which mm. is not really needed. I don't really think you'd go for it in this lineup. Uh, I mean, you'll, you'll be hitting creeps now and then, but I think it's going to be pretty fast and furious. Well, the goal per minute. Heavy farm. Who is it? I, I can't, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember Jams' build, actually, when he went for the mid. Because I got a funny feeling he went for that, like, Hand of Midas kind of style, and then went for the gold per minute as well. And he hit this huge item spike around the mid game. Had a hell of a lot of damage. But yeah, can't remember that one for now. Either way, uh, looks like we're going to have Queen of Pain reconnect back into the game, which is an upside. There were... So Sighting of PC yeah. issues. So we're going to give it a try. So we can come straight back into the game now, and we'll see if Misery can escape. The kick is well off target from XY, and Misery will just Shikuchi away to safety. As you said, Toby. Uh, Black Moon, you are really low. Flame Break will give him some space, and it was the one charges that give him a little bit more life. Black, he doesn't have Phantom Strike available, and won't run any further through that Firefly. Bet he wishes he had a Blightstone. He probably did. <laughs> Just seeing a little bit extra damage. I also don't know where his creep was. He did have a mud golem earlier, but I can't seem to see. He was. It I off. think it was running it through the firefly, mm. and into and into the die creep wave. So lost it that way. Well, at least everything seems to be working. So try is succeeding. Resolution now has that dragon land. So welcome to the extra range. Over on the Drow Ranger, this is a, a horrible place actually for Nuts to be. Has to sit on top of the tower and use Fable to drag the wave down. And with three heroes ready to go, they have the sentry wards so they can see Misery just shikuching his way in closer. But they keep the Earth Spirit right behind. TPs are on their way, Misery. Well, the kick does come in. It's over on the Vengeful Spirit. And it's Phantom Assassin. Black comes up to the top lane, looking for the kill on the VS. It should be pretty much guaranteed, especially when Nuts has that Fade Bolt level three back off cooldown. So they stopped the DC push into the tier 1 tower, but the tower's still down to 50%. And look at Moon, already just mildly creep skipping, and this tower I think is going to die very, very shortly. Resolution okay. already used Precision Aura. Oh, Lasso's okay. coming in, Resolution's got Gust available, they're going to get the silence onto the Magnus, trying to keep their distance away from the RP with the Flame Break. They know he was going to tick out, the Skewer's going to be off target, but now it's Moon being chased down, the perfect kick out from XY, Rolling Bolt of Fords, the Moon will fall, but the Revenge is tit for tat right now on the bottom lane, throwing the Lance up to Resolution, slowing him down, but Nuts comes in, but in comes the reinforcements. Weeha will arrive, Sonic Wave is on cooldown, he still has that Scream available if he wants to kill Nuts off that way, with the scream in the attack, he'll actually do so. Too much damage on the Magnus there. He thought he could tank it all, but 
Nice combination of the gust into the flame break, just made it impossible for Magnus to reach a dry ranger. And this rotation works even better for DC. Yeah, you fell, you push up on the top lane, but you take the fight, and then you take the tier one tower and bottom lane. Successful rotation for resolution, and TP's coming back off cooldown. He can go straight back up to the top lane and start all over again. Moon's getting so much from, from this early game. Fat, one of the premier offlaners, I would say. Very difficult to zone out, and this game seems to be no different. Mm -hmm. And there's a DD, but Misery will yoink it right under the watching eyes of Jabs. Well, those watching eyes actually don't see that much. You look for the vision and you look for the wards out, and the only observer what is watching the rotation down the bottom lane through the rune, <laughs> uh, yeah, through the rune spot. And he's going for Silver Edge on the Drought Ranger, it looks like, to deal with the Phantom Assassin. Very common pickup. The hunt is on. Digital Chaos. That top tower is still at 100%, so if DC want to try and defend this, they potentially can, but with a double damage rune on Misery, they may even just win as the trade-off pushing into the mid tower, because the catapult wave has already arrived. Yep, Precision Aura proc again for resolution, and it should be another T1 down. Black has push, uh, bought the Blightstone so he can push towers maybe a little bit slower than DC, but still respectable. And they actually might even want to wait for the gank. They've got a small Dark Troll Summoner. That's what he's dominated up at the moment. Sitting on the other side of the hill. Got our resolution back behind the tower. VSTP's in and it's taking them too long. Plus the observer what they planted up near the shrine scattered Moon's movement to the top lane. This might be an easier one if they can catch our Queen of Pain, but no vision on their side of the river. She just struts through their jungle. They're looking for the ward again. They're wondering if it's visible, which it is not. And we turn it again into another push. Dominated creep on the bottom. We saw Ice 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 do this earlier today. And power up his creep, push in with a set of blasts and just attack into the tier one towers. Keep this this battle as a as much of a split push as possible. Just want to slow down a draw as much as you can. Yep. Nuts potentially caught out. Uh, Misery is not really going to attack in. VS putting down a nice aggressive observer ward. Radiant Considering he was attacked by the tower, it kind of like leans towards knowing the fact that ward got put down. Bottom lane, Magnus. Skewer is available. Weeha. I think he was looking to dodge it. The skewer will actually drag Moon back because that brings the Firefly along with it. Back up to the top lane, a three man gust. Resolution. Is there the stun? Yes, there is. Some dominated Centaur. So Resolution won't get out. Black with a double kill. Misery, a quick Shikuchi down through the river. Scouted out by the observer ward. But it's still two heroes for the price of one plus the tower in favor of DC. Man, that centaur stomp. Resolution probably didn't see that one coming, but he is still very, very farmed. Already picked up a Shadow Blade before he uh, ended up taking a spill. The Phantom Laser, not sure what build he's going for. The Ags is decent, but I'm not exactly sure when the best time to get the Ags is. If you get it too early, uh, you don't have the fusals, your illusions don't, don't do that much damage, but if you get it too late, your Phantom Lance uh, damage just doesn't do that much. Like, you want your magic damage early on in the game when people don't have thousands of HP. So it's kind of a tough uh, tough call as to when to get it. And that's some great Observer Ward and Sentries down. With the Sentry down from DC, they understand just how safe Misery is until, yeah, faces realize it themselves. Sentry for Sentry, Misery backs up, and the pressure goes into a very low tier 1 tower, and DC have a choice to make. Do they want to fight this? Weeha right now is getting a better trade-off in the mid, attacking into the tier 2 tower. I saw Shikuchi steal from the Rubik. Was he really going to reach? Rolling Bolt of Forge with Stifling Dagger. They reach up to Sasa. Even Bowrider getting kicked by the stone of the Earth Spirit. Another Sentry Ward has to be planted. This time it's going to be the crit. Bringing down the VS, but the RP catches out Weeha. Lasso them back in. Keep the Firefly right on top of Faces. It's a good fight for DC if they can keep that damage going. A Resolution could do it from the back line. Misery is already dominating, getting a double kill out of this. And Jabs trapped up in the tree line. Weeha holding him in with the rest of the creeps. That is four heroes lost for Faceless and potentially more. But they have no stun available to stop Black from TPing away to safety. Wow, they went so deep, it's just the Ventral Spirit. It's not exactly the ideal hero to kill first. Uh, and on top of that, oh, it's just a one-man RP coming out from Magnus. Downside of the Helmet Dominator build is that you don't really have that much mobility. Even with the Cobalt Foreman, that's the only mobility that could possibly be provided by the... Uh, the Helmet Dominator creep, you just can't really get in there. He skewered in, but it was uh, 
this, at their big team fight ultimate. Magnetite supposedly wasn't used yet by Earth Spirit because he had already used the majority of his spells trying to catch out that eventual spirit at the start of the fight. Yeah, he'll need to have a little bit more mana, obviously, for the next engagement as he's going to pick up his arcane boots now. Yeah, not a, not the greatest fight for Phasers, but perfect for Digital Chaos. Nicely kited. Misery actually did more damage than anybody else in that fight. Just shakuching himself around, never really becoming a like a big priority target for Faceless. Yeah, he hits for 150 right now. It's quite respectable as a Weaver, and still no deaths yet on Misery. Oh, they found Rubik. Blink over, but with a solemn blink in the hands of Rubik, he's able to move away faster than the Batrider can catch up. Misery showing himself again, rolling forward, almost actually connected. Misery was just a little bit late on the retreat, that's why the Earth Spirit missed his target. Yep, the silence. Nuts trying to perhaps get a better spell, Shikuchi, way better well, than Blink, I would say. Well, he can just use both. Blink into Misery once he sees him. Get the, get the quick grab on Telekinesis. But you'd almost need to have like Magnus skewer into RP to hold him there to get the kill. Yeah, you need Earth Spear for that. Earth Spear has an instant cast. Oh. Skewer in is just way too slow. Rubik, he just blinked in. And now Drow Ranger with the gust. Nuts losing life very quickly. Can blink again. But he's got no real help and he's dying to the Scarab Beetle. And Misery knows that Nuts can't actually do anything to stop his own death. That's a really smart play by Misery. If Misery had showed himself right there, he would have stolen Shikuchi and then would have... Uh, Gotten away from the swarm. Looks like uh, DC is wondering about Roshan. That threw the sticky napalm in. Now the dominated creep puts the tornado inside. So both teams thinking about the big man at the moment. But uh, faces need time. That blink dagger is still not up on ice, ice, ice. They, they have the Dezo and the and the Alpha Wolf on the PA, so she actually will crit for quite a lot of damage. And the Empower, mind you. Now they need is the control to go with it. Yep, that is correct. Wondering if Diffuser will do enough for that. It's a healthy amount of damage. He also went for Treads too, so far more of a fighting build than the split push BOTs. That is the normal alternative. Diffuser is up. So the only other critical item which you're looking for from Faceless is going to be that Blink Dagger on the Magnus before they'll be willing to fight, even if their supports don't have a lot to work with. They both had to build into Arcane Boots. Or both looking to build into arcane boots. Oh, One Rezo, of them has it. Rezo just gets a free tower, free T2. Makes contesting that roach just a little bit more difficult. Perhaps difficult enough to the point where DC might look into going in there themselves. They don't have a Helmet Dominator on their side, so no easy way for them to actually tank the roach. I guess there is the swarm available from Misery. You saw the shrines available. That's the advantage of the Radiant side. Well, Quick Blink Jacker is up. Quick TP to the shrine. Will be a four-man smoke. They look to Weeha. Black slows him down. A quick blink away, but Weeha up the river. Skewer forward. Weeha has his blink off cooldown in one second time. Another cycling dagger. Another silence. Now maybe you even commit it. No, you don't even need it. They keep the control up nicely. And with no Queen of Pain for 44 seconds and an Alpha Wolf behind them, potentially, Faceless can now do Roshan. Bat Rider is a menace around the pit, though. Oh, until he's got his four staff, it's not going to be as effective. Has to blink out, stifling daggers to slow him down. Sticky napalm is the steal from Nuts. Not exactly what he was searching for, but Faceless take the safer objective, and that's the tier one tower. I still think napalm's pretty good. It makes a turn rate, especially for heroes like a Weaver, who have no cast point on the Shikuchi, but need to turn around in order to run away. It mm -hmm. can be quite problematic. I would say napalm is actually one of uh, his better spells to steal. I'm surprised Nuts didn't find harder to keep that Observer ward up. I suppose uh, sucks. I could have just thrown out another Sentry Ward. He threw an Obs and a Sentry right on top of DC's Obs and Sentry. The and FL's Four grouping up once wards. again, and uh, we have a smoke sitting on Nuts. Wow, Phantom Lancer is eyeing for a BKB neck, so very defensive build, I would say, with the strength from the Treads. And the BKB, not something that you see quite often, but maybe his primary job is to stick on top of the Drought Ranger the entire fight or deal with the bat rider the entire fight. But you should be able to do that with also like things like Manda style, right? Because mm. that's also going to break you free. Like both are going to break you free of the silence of the Drow Ranger. Yeah, maybe he's worried about being bursted down by the Queen of Pain as well. Mm. You know, or just not being able to doppelganger because he's silenced up. Yeah, I think true. BKB will keep that immunity going. Oh, Centaur yeah. pops 
the smoke. smoke. So they realize that at least one's there. Moon jumps in. Who's he go on? It's over on Ice Ice Ice. Support needs to arrive. Sonic Wave's going to connect over on three, but Ice 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 is bailing out of here with a jump forward. Now you're up. He's going to connect, and Black will have time. A double kill actually in for Jabs, and the Centaur is Tom's on the Vengeful Spirit. They roll forward, finding Moon and Digital Chaos. They're losing heroes left, right, and center down the hillside. A double kill for Black, and this time it is Faceless who will wipe four for one. Wow, that was a... Pretty decent initiation by Moon, but Magnus was just too tanky. They actually could not burst him down quickly enough, and now the damage is really starting to add up. Like, the Diffusal Blade on the Phantom Lancer is nice for the for the Purge, but it's also nice because it gives him a ton of agility. And agility plus Empower, he is actually hitting for a lot right now, and I think he gets the bonus uh, agility from the Phantom Rush as well. So, yeah, that's to account for when you're getting right-click down. And Agility also gives him a ton of armor, very easy to man up on the Weaver, the Ventral Spirit, and the Draw Ranger, who mostly rely on physical damage. I love a little dusting around. They're waiting for some Soxa. kind of MS play, and yeah, Soxa came in a little bit closer. And that, with the swap up, he puts Misery in harm's way. He'll just time lapse out to safety. Worthy tribute. And the RP starting to be really fearsome in the team fights. How can DC actually deal with this? Normally, the Queen of Pain is kind of able to deal with the Magnus. The problem with Queen is she can't get in and out of fight. She can get in, but then she's just going to die and perhaps lends more credibility to Faceless Void or Faceless's uh, ban of the puck over the Queen of Pain. It seems like the range control too is great for Faceless, like their positioning. Like you've got Earthspirit on one side, Rubik on another, you're getting land stuff while being mana burned, diffusal up, that's also a problem, but Black can just jump from one side to the other with that Phantom Strike. He's not really that restricted. And if you get the initiation through a Shadow Blade of Magnus, life is even harder. And I'm not even taking into account the sixth member of Faceless, which is that Centaur. He's always in the right position to get a control stomp off. Yeah, that's actually a really nice uh, use of the Helmet Dom from Magnus. I guess we see it more and more from offlanes, but it's just that extra bit of control so that Magnus can, uh, and Phantom Assassin can cleave them all down. Phantom Assassin is hitting really hard. With Empower, she's like 300. Combine that with a minus armor from Dezo, and then, mm -hmm. God forbid, a crit from Phantom Assassin. That's just going to be devastating. Faces still have one very big problem. They're losing towers too quickly. So they only have that tier 2 tower remaining in the mid. At that point, DC can open up on the shrines. So Faces need to gain control of their side of the map. DC have always been exceptionally good at putting pressure on the towers, even when they're slightly behind in terms of uh, fighting ability. Oh. Net worth just barely in favor of DC right now. All that tower gold adding up, but now Faceless trying to take a fight down mid. Yeah, they push it up. Again, these empower buffed up cores that DC just don't want to go anywhere near, and you see just how hard they hit. That tier 2 tower looked more like paper than, than rock. And power at work. And they're going in. <laughs> they're actually looking to go high ground. Oh, the blink skewer. They were only looking for the interruption on the Vengeful Spirit. Nothing more than that. But with the Alpha Wolf behind them, the damage output of all these heroes is huge. You get the Blink Class O pulling back the Phantom Assassin. So Black's in trouble. Remember, he's the Aegis of the Immortal. Blinked a little bit further out. Bottom lane is being pushed in as well as top for Digital Chaos. They have a momentum on those lanes, but Black, he's just going ham. Can miss the BKB. It's a three-man RP. Where's that cleave damage? It's not enough. Weeha will blink out. Moon's low. Black will get the crit, but he'll lose his life for it. The tier three tower is still very, very healthy, and Nuts has no easy way back out again. So he'll have to sacrifice his own life. Wow, that and was... faces are bailing. They got dragged in very deep. There was no crit from PA. I think if there, were, there was at least one crit. Two of the heroes would have just died instantly during the RP. So it was a bit of a gamble for Ice Ice going in that deep. Of course, he knows it's right next to D4s, but three heroes in an RP with an empowered PA critting that sounded pretty enticing Did he him. actually get the empower back up yeah, on the he PA? Did. I, yeah, I saw him try and cast it again in the fight because that's way more important than Magnus right clicking unless you have like the Echo Saber build but that is not the build that Magnus has turned towards this game nice little status scout out realizing DC's trying to steal their ancients maybe not as concerned about that while the PA is down but giving the respect over to Faceless no reason to take a risk just for three ancients I do like to play for Moon to go on the PA like 
PA, sure, she had Aegis and BKB, but because she has the Aegis, she doesn't feel like she really needs to use the BKB on her first life, and probably wasn't, like, you don't have your fingers on the BKB, you're like, ah, yeah, Batrider's not gonna go on me, but Batrider dragged her all the way to the T4 Towers, and even despite her getting the Blink Strike out right before she perished with the Aegis, she's still just in a terrible position. <laughs> Pretty much right on top of the shrines. Wow. Makes life way too hard. This full, well, uh... We'll wait till everything settles down, we'll get straight back into the game. But Misery, he's picked up the biggest item of all. So, you were talking about it, the real thing that makes it difficult for Faze is just to focus on one target, that Aghanim Scepter will arrive. But, but maybe it's also one of those other issues where, like, Faceless, like, they keep grouping them all up together, so you get the AoE damage anyway, so it's, it's good. Uh, I hear we actually are going to have ourselves a little bit more of an extended break here, so uh, make sure you grab yourself a beverage. We're going to come back after a very short break as we'll change out of PC, and we'll come back to end game one of Faceless versus DC, or well, the only game. We'll be back. Going to buy Merlini. Hi. Welcome back. Yep. So, break. recapping what just happened, if you, you know, maybe have only for just the time. tuned in. Yeah. Uh, Faceless had a slightly worse early game draw ranger and Queen of Pain kind of dominating their early game for CS. Battle Rider was a big nuisance, but Faceless Void struck back with a really big team fight, four for one, in their own radiant uh, jungle. However, DC are keeping pace in terms of farm. Drow Ranger is highest CS in the game currently, and Roshan going to be eyed very quickly soon, as Faceless just failed their high ground push with Phantom Assassin being pulled all the way back to the T4 Towers. Yep, which is why we now see Faceless just trying to get control of their side lanes. There were the other things that were pushing in during that, and that's why that bottom tier 3 town down to 479. The top tier 3 town was fine, but they took a lot more damage with the lane push more than anything else on the top lane. And Drow Ranger's uh, already preparing for late. Moon is in a little bit of a world of hurt. He thinks he's actually away. Oh no, he blinks just in time. Magnus will have to commit the RP, able to do so. So Moon caught out, only a sticky napalm steal, but it is still one very dead Moon meander on the bot lane. RP down, small silver lining for Faceless. Ags is going to be the next item for Drow Ranger, very important. Ags. Mjolnir is ridiculously good versus Phantom Laser. I also think that's kind of a justified purchase for his BKB too, knowing that that's one of the ways for Drawing to deal with him in late game. Mm -hmm. Wow, DC scouting out Roshan six minutes after it last died. Somebody <laughs> didn't take down the timer. Well, you can't blame him. We had, did have the interruption, yep. so... It's easy to forget. Yeah. Had that stopwatch going on the side of your computer and then just forgot to stop the watch. Usually they have it in chat. Most, I, I even know some pro players that have like three time, three times down. One is when your age expires. One is when it first can spawn, and another one is when it last, last possible spawn. Mm -hmm. So, There's it's a very Morley. good habit. <laughs> well, if you want to be a good support, do that for your team. For now, the other objective we um, we kind of were looking at was faceless. How how long they can keep this middle lane pushed down and pressure off their tier two tower? Because the second this goes down they start losing shrines. And Digital Chaos are going to start having the same issue. With the, with the dropping of that tier 1 tower on bot lane, Faceless are going to start adding pressure into the side lanes and then start taking out the shrines. And DC need that maneuverability. They need those shrines to fight near, not to mention having the regeneration on the front lines. Well, they see the Phantom Lancer. Are they going to actually try and smoke up towards the Radiant Shrine? Well, they're coming to the Earth prospect. Spirit. So Earth Spirit, quick blink away. Moon won't hit his target. The Rolling Boulder will get XY out to safety. But bottom lane is where the attack was coming in from Faceless. Nuts is staying in the tree line. So the pick up, the throw down, the crits! Oh, well, Moon, welcome back to the World of the Living. You can now return to the Land of the Dead. And Black wants to go for more, looking for more crits. Two hits, no crit just yet, but the Troll Trapper is moving forward. He can use that now over on Weehart. The blink out, Magnus can't get close enough. Would have had to skewer behind the Tier 2 tower to make that work. But they have a Catapult Wave coming forward, and this means the Tier 2 tower is four foot of DC on bot lane. Hello, Empower. It's a nice little buff. I say little. It does so much work for all of Faceless. We saw it when they ran the Magnus offlane earlier today, and we're seeing it again. And Digital Chaos are really on the ropes. 
Well, one way to deal with the empower physical damage is to pick up a Ghost Scepter. That is Bat Rider's next item. However, not particularly useful versus the Phantom Lancers, though. They're kind of hard pressed to find out how they can defend against this onslaught of physical damage that Faceless is bringing. That's and such a quick Roshan. Yep, yeah, Roshan is up immediately. No one even suspects it could be up this early. Jazz would be like, just make an illusion and send one over. It should be at a, actually, it won't get there in time, not with the current PL illusions. Nah. Phantom Assassin uh, Helen Dominator Creep is going to be the easiest. So it looks like Phantom Assassin is actually going for the Lincoln Sphere. Very common pickup versus the Bat Rider, especially if you are a BKB carry. Speaking of Bat Rider, oh, him. Nuts. I thought for a moment Nuts is actually going to grab Moon before this would all happen. You can TP over the try if you want to. Nuts looking for some extra control. They get the silence on the Weaver. Magnus here for the RP. Three core black as a cleave on. Thanks to that big empower. Moon, Ghost Scepter's all buying him some time, but another rolling ball of four with the Magnetize turn on. Black will find a triple kill on top of the shrine, and all three heroes of Digital Chaos do not have buyback so this is an uncontested Roche or a push down mid damn what an RP from ice 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 right there and I do like the fail safe in between the Weaver and the VS if Weaver gets gone on VS swaps him out if VS gets gone on I'm sure that he would probably get time lapsed out but that doesn't really work when you guys are still very clumped and Magnus is just preying on this positioning from digital chaos and this T3 is under siege it's at half HP yep Jabs is the only one really committing to it. Black actually bailed out to pick up the Lincoln Sphere. Uh, but the tier 3 tower is lost. They can do some damage into the rain tracks. But they're pinging out. They, they want to go for both. So the Dominated Creep scouts out Roshan. They have an Illusion Rune to boot. So they can keep that up to scan out if DC want to TP into their own shrine to contest Roshan. Um, and two wards. Why not? The Observer War doesn't actually give them that much vision, though. They don't have vision of the shrine itself. Those trees are obscuring that Observer War, so they might be in a little bit of trouble if DC can react fast enough, but it doesn't look like they will be. That right is coming, minus. but it's too late. The Blink, the Skewer, it gave him perfect vision of Moon's approach with the Fade Bolt down. The Firefly wears off, getting caught on the hillside. So Moon is down again, another 48 seconds, just as Faceless take Roshan and the Aegis with it. Black is just doing ridiculous amounts of damage. They actually don't really have a good way to stop them. Like, they don't have very many stuns or ways to keep him in place. He hasn't even had to pop his BKB to get the damage off in most of these fights. Yeah, that's an 8-second BKB still. But the Aghanim Scepter arrives for Weehaas. This makes the pushing high ground a little bit more difficult for Faceless, just because of that really low cooldown on the level 3 Sonic Wave. Mm -hmm. Not to mention his talent tree, where he has another cooldown reduction. Yeah, they actually need to get level 25 on the Queen of Pain ASAP. That is one pretty good way to deal with the Phantom Assassin You're if for they can manage steal? it. Yeah, oh. the life steal and the blade mail. That's going to be a long ways away. I don't even know if they can start thinking ahead that far into the game. Last T2. Yep. Uh, Spirit's the man who's been tasked with defending the bottom lane. He's hiding under the tower at the moment. Or oh, hiding in the tree at the moment. And Misery feels very inclined to make a jump. There's a Blink Dagger on the Earth Spirit. So with an extra TP forward, he goes for the silence. This was all pretty much a trap with a follow-up stun. And Weaver, he fell for it. The swap out, the Sonic Wave will connect. But all of them coming in the RP again. Three heroes caught in an ice, ice, ice on the money. And they'll find Weehara blink up to the high ground. He's really slowed up thanks to the Fuser Blade. And Jabs jumps up with him. And again, another charge. We with the secondary blink goes into the camp. Do they actually see him there? Well, they don't at the end. As he TPs all the way home, but that's a three-for-one trade-off. And your price was about 300, 400 damage to the Tier 3 tower on bot. They are very familiar with DC's ways of, okay, if we're behind, we're just going to try and split push. Maybe not even with our carry, but with with this time it was just the Weaver. But they they were so prepared for that. And, of course, I think he's just nailing these RPs. He even has a Lincoln Sphere himself. Uh, Moon is a non-factor. Like, how many times has he also died in just the last 10 minutes? It feels like, like way too many. He's gotten, he's 2 9 11 on the bat rider. I feel like he's been getting crit a lot. Yeah. To yeah. be fair. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not saying it's, I'm not saying it's Moon's fault at the moment. I'm just saying like faces are just out positioning and catching him out a lot more than he's trying to actually catch them out. They have damage issues. No one's really doing damage. Queen of Pain just kind of flops over if she tries to go in. She has no BKB, so. 
if she gets silenced up by Earth Spirit, kind of dead to rights. And her Orchid almost does nothing too. Like the two big cores, she wants to try and control who are doing the damage. The PL and the PA both have BKBs, and one of them has a Lincoln Sphere, which he gave over to the PL. Oh my <laughs> resolution. Okay, with the Acronyms plus the Maelstrom, those procs do some decent work against the PL, and now you see DC's high ground defense. Yep, you gotta kill Rezo, or you have to have just way large of an item advantage to be able to push into that. And that's before he has his Mjolnir. Once he get his, gets his Mjolnir, that's a crazy amount of damage. Goes from four bounces to 12 bounces. But do you turn this now into a full split push? Like, do you avoid digital cast because that? Or can you even do that? Like, when Dro range, you can do the solo pushback on one lane. I think you just need a, uh, like a gem on someone so that the Draw Ranger can't push out, nor, nor can the Weaver. Once you get a gem up, you can kind you of control one. their positioning. It's, a, it's already on XY. Oh, okay. So okay. the Earth Spirit got that vision. He was yeah. looking to buy it when that initiation started on bottom lane. Yeah, get the gem, just uh, kind of keep them controlled, keep them in. Drow Ranger, she's really hard pressed for item size in the late game. You definitely want the Silver Edge because you want to be able to kill the PA. You want your Ag's Mjolnir because that's all your damage. You want the Hurricane Pike too. It allows you to siege towers and it gives you some sort of survivability. And then what about your last slot? You want a lot of things. You want maybe an MKB to deal with the PA to do even more Ag split damage to the Illusions. You want a BKB perhaps so you just don't get run down. You might want armor so you don't get one shot by the PA. There's just so many different things for that last item. You might want a Butterfly to help the precision aura damage like th there's the possibilities are like you know five to ten different items that she could get for that last slot i love the small little army the two dominant creeps are slowly very very slowly taking out that shrine of, of digital chaos no risk <laughs> it really is none it's like okay they're gonna die great i got more where that came from, uh, Nuts running forward on Shikuchi to quick blink away. Moon gets Isolate to blink forward as she gets bashed up and the RP again! It's three in it! We has up with a high ground, but what's he gonna do apart from watch his teammates die? Three heroes again, only one of them has buyback and it's the Bat Rider. My god, Ice 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 with these RPs, they're just incredible. Uh, it's it's kind of hilarious because he, he ended the last best of three uh, walking off and he, and he just said under his breath, like, I, I, I played like crap in the last game. Like, in this game, he is on, like, so on point with every RP. He also got so much money early on, and what are you going to do to stop him? You can't even do it. Like, he sits invis, you know there's no detection. And he could even blink and skewer over on Weeha, and that's what he's probably considering at the moment, but hey, why not? Keep uh -oh. the attack going, you've already taken the mid racks. Weeha's waiting for it. Eight seconds until Batrider is back up with the Weaver. So they do a little bit of chip damage and they're bailing. I think this is, might just get worse and worse. Yeah, sure, Drow Ranger might pick up Mjolnir, but then you're going to have to deal with the Refresher on the Magnus. Like, one RP is enough to slay three of your team members. Two RPs is just game over. Uh, Digital Chaos, could this be it? Could they actually be the second team out of Dota Pit? We eliminate one team per day on the first two days. Tomorrow, there's a lot more eliminations. Dyer, as you scan, they know that Faceless is poised near their shop. And there is a DV on the top lane. This could be a potential turnaround point for resolution. Hitting for a whopping 500. Oh, wait, make that 660. <laughs> That's with the Venjara, of course. Yeah. Not a bad thing to have. Problem is, they're all out of position. PL is ready to force into the bottom lane. He needs a creep wave, however, but he'll start the attack. At least gets DC to look behind themselves and jabs. He's keeping up with the backdoor regeneration. And with the help of Black, actually, they wouldn't even care. The creep wave now arrives, and DC, they're going to take too long to TP in. Meanwhile, Jabs continues to replicate himself up. Misery's the neighborhood, and the RP again! <laughs> ice, 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 got him! He pulls him back with the skewer three, gone Sonic Wave, negligible damage, and this may just be it with a stolen gust. They're losing everything, the whole kit, Anchor Boodle, Weeha will blink back into base. He'll be fine there, but with four heroes down, Battle Rider will buy back, making a three. You still don't have the big damage output. You never had it before, but now the draw and the VS are gone. You're losing all three lanes, and potentially the game. No PKBs versus Ice Ice Ice's constant three-man RPs. They just get make. They're just cut up into pieces. Yep. No way to really survive, and they do it again. Nuts with a blink forward, still with that stolen gust. Weeha, Ghost Scepter will save him. 
but he has to regenerate back up. Digital Chaos will have one last fight in them, and Faces will be the ones to determine when this happens. The, me the Megas are now up. Digital Chaos are locked inside their base. And Black, they turn around, they go back in again, they find Weeha, the perfect gust, the perfect silence. He's down for 83 seconds, so again, Digital Chaos have to fight 4v5, outnumbered and out DPS'd. That's one of the big problems with Jaro in the shots. You can actually, you can take the T1s and the T2s, but after that, you're kind of a loss as to what to do. You are very vulnerable in the team fights. you're not particularly good at pushing high ground. They couldn't really get an Aegis and let Resolution get really, really big this game. And at some point, they were going to have to win a team fight, but they just cannot control this Magnus anymore. Well, they can't control anybody. You look at the control, if you just go through the faces lineup, you've got the second level Diffuser Blade now picked up by the PL. So you're not even going to be able to run away from the lineup, but you've got the quick jump in on the Magnus. You've got more control coming from the Earth Spirit with his Yule Scepter. The Blink and the Rubik, he's done so much work with the Soul and Dro range of guts. I think he's actually done more silences than the Dro's managed to achieve in this game. Well, and smoke. you've got a full Abyssal Blade on the Phantom Assassin. So whoever he finds is dead. They had a small window, I think DC did, before the Magnus got his Blink Dagger. Um, but it didn't seem like they were really able to capitalize on it. The thing about the having the Magnus on the lineup is that your melee cores just scale way faster. Normally, PA is not really a threat. They see everything. It's the Observer Ward that's almost at the fountain. The RP will catch too, and this might be it unless Dro range. And pump out the damage. He gets picked up, thrown back down again. Black is focusing him. Can Jack get closer with the jump forward misery controlled time less unavailable not while he's silenced up jabs he's gonna go under the fountain they're trying to force out the gg from dc and it's about that time to get it as hey woo! i saw your loss toby picking that filthy crystal maiden how dare you you should have seen the techies game with my fifty thousand net worth all right so back into the game and gg it has been called with a skewer out that is going to seal the end there for Digital Chaos. Faceless will take the best of Chaos. We'll join Elements Pro Gaming on the sidelines of Dota.